Every year we try and work on something absolutely epic and this year is no exception. We've just been in Japan shooting Turbos and Temples 3. It's an absolutely epic feature film. It comes out on Christmas Day. We know not everybody has a great Christmas so that is our little gift to you. Plus, this year it comes with Turbos and Temples 3, the book. It's available right now at MightyCarmos.com. I've covered the car so you don't see what it is. But right now, people, we're here for Le Borgs, Martin. We're here for customization and maddenization of the Subaru. Maddenization. That's right, this episode we are going to continue engine swapping our Le Borg. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Last episode, all the boys came down and gave us a hand getting the engine out, this one out, and getting the mad built H6 in. We also started fabricating some stuff. It's all gonna slow down now. As we start fabricating, all this stuff is a lot slower than bolting things on. Now when you are bolting things on, somebody has actually already done the R&D. It's only bolt on by the time you buy it, but exactly. before you bought the bolt on, someone actually had to customise that. So yep. that is what's happening. This is not a swap that's been done before. So all of this stuff has to be done from scratch a Rooney, hence why we're so happy to have the boys here helping us because that is what they do. This episode is going to be absolutely huge. There's going to be lots of time running around, getting stuff, finding things that have gone lost in the post, picking things up and basically making sure that everybody has everything they need to keep this mad conversion burbling along without a hitch. No more burble though, boxer rumble's gone. That's true. In the bin. Nothing perfects this kind of fabrication more than practice. Al has turboed more cars than I've blown up in my life, so I'm pretty excited to see what he comes up with. I'm just working on the uh, driver's side of the, well, driver's side head part of the exhaust manifold, so that's the, the tight bit that comes around and it goes up towards your up pipe, which goes up to the turbo. So we're keeping the traditional Subaru method of going between the cylinder head and the and the cross member like the EJ engine was. I haven't done it like this before but it's still doable so let's go. Uh, this is head coming out, does a, obviously a 180, heads up into the between the cylinder head and the cross member. That's where a merge will be to obviously receive the opposite side. I've already cut this one uh, so That'll get uh, connected like that, welded on. We'll, we'll then cut this back. That'll turn into a two and a half inch up pipe. This will continue on and head over to the other side cylinder head. There's lots of different ways you can get the exhaust gases from the exhaust ports out into the turbo. But there's some important factors to think about, like managing heat, clearing sensors and solenoids, and not hanging too low where it can all be taken out by a speed hump. Al is slowly building the manifold using stainless mandrel bends, which he's tacking together. He's then merging the pipes where the two banks meet. This is all two inch stainless tube, but we'll go to two and a half inch where the pipes merge. That's about the biggest pipe work we can fit in the space that we have. The manifold is looking great, so now we can start thinking about wastegate placement. Can we have dual, like, EX44s here? Can I ask you a question? What? How do we plumb that back? Um, it's plumbed to atmosphere. And then out of the atmosphere, back into the pipe. Just, yeah, well, it all there. ends up at the Wi-Fi. back. It ends up at the back, but we plumb, we plumb it back to there, no, right? here, because it's... Equal. Yeah, but then it's plumbed, but it's plumbed back. It equalises... The pressure differential, the atmosphere. because the exhaust is sucking, like it's sucking the, out yeah. the thing. It'll just end up at the back. Through the exhaust pipe. Yeah. We're sticking with the STI cross member, meaning there's a cutout where our up pipe can go. The lower part of the manifold is now all tacked together and looking excellent, ready for its purge welding. In the meantime, Benny and I need to work out what to do with the fuel system as the factory pump and lines are going to go in the bin. A car that's going to be making this much power is also going to need a whole heap of fuel because it's running on ethanol. We need to make sure it's getting enough corn juice to turn that into tyre frying power. So this here is the uh, factory uh, fuel hanger system, basically one pump in there. Benny, we're going to two. Going for the big sticks. Uh, anything that we need to do putting these together or it's just the same as anything else except we're running two pumps? Just take a bit of time, make sure it's all right. Um, we do need to change over our fuel level sender. This is actually the wiring for the sender, although it looks like a fuel pump plug, it's not. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of wiring with that. And we've got to add a barb in here because currently this is only configured for one pump. So we've got to do that before we do it. Basically just 
whack it all together and put in the car. We're using a radium twin pump hanger that fits into the factory location, which means we don't have to take up space with external pumps or surge tanks. You can fit two pretty big pumps in here, but we're planning to stage ours so they aren't running flat out all of the time. The hanger then drops straight in via the rear seat, but we'll need to upgrade the fuel feed line to take all that extra flow. So Benny's gonna make a new feed line out of Dash 8 hose and fittings and run it up to the engine bay. The manifold is looking amazing thanks to Alan's amazing skills. Uh, now it's time to actually weld it. So it's all been tacked and placed in the car and everything's in the right spot. But we are gonna purge weld it. Can you give me the 101 on purge welding? I think we've done this here before. No, we haven't. I I only really do it on stuff like this, like manifold, uh, like pre-turbo where there's going to be like pretty intense heat. Yeah. So when you weld stainless steel, the, it, the, the, the alloy of the steel, like the compound of it, you get a reaction on, on the inside where the air can get to it, like oxygen, it will sugar, they call it sugaring, it's like where it looks shit, mm. basically black looking corally stuff. Yeah. So purging is basically filling the inside of the pipe with argon so there's no oxygen so there's no Which reaction the same argon you're squirting at the top of it when that's you're right yeah it. so you're protecting it from oxygen yeah so this is i mean it, it's a good idea to do it in this case yeah. you don't have to we didn't yeah. do it on super gramps still and it's still going, going many years. many years yeah. later yeah um, but it is kind of the right thing to do in, sure. in this sort of high temperature area um, but it's mainly its purpose is for stuff like um, like food service milk factories anything that that's got it's to stop bacteria growing inside the, right. the inside of the weld so yeah. they can clean it properly. So we always have the joke, it's not a milk factory. <laughs> you don't have to purge everything just because it's stainless steel. Sure. You don't have to purge mild steel at all. You don't have to purge yeah. aluminium. It's, it's not really a thing. That's just for Instagram. So you need an extra bottle or a way to divert gas out of that yeah. bottle. And so we are feeding it into here through a little something you just made, right? Like a little filling. Yeah, these are just... Aluminium offcuts from cutting hole saw holes, and I, oh, when, when you've got this V band, you can just use the V band and clamp it, and it's Great. just got a so fitting in the feeds end. Feeds in argon through there, and then you've just taped up, got another one, and taped it with a couple yeah. of holes. So we we let it purge out for a few minutes, mm -hmm. basically push the oxygen out, oh, okay. and then restrict it so it sort of creates a little bit of pressure in there. Not yep. much, but yep. um, the other advantage of purging is it makes a shit welder a lot better because <laughs> that argon in there will help your weld. It helps the management of the heat, right? Is it yeah, what it's sort of right. as well? It, it'll, it also, the pressure of it will stop the stop your filler falling into it. Oh, so right. you can get away with a lot more when it when it when it's purged. Right. And otherwise we're just a tigging. We've got to do have gas lens on this. It's like a Unimig TIG. What kind of amps? 60 you've got it set to? Is that the kind of thing you'd be doing? Yeah, no that's... pedal required for this? Uh, you can use a pedal, but you, you, not so much required on this sort of stuff as with aluminium because yeah. because this doesn't lose heat. Yep. Aluminium is a great radiator, so it, all the heat you're putting in, half of it's leaving really quickly, sure. so you, you have to manage that heat a lot more. So that's just your 2.4 mil tungsten on there. It does have a gas lens, so it distributes the, the gas a bit nicer. Also, you can use a Perspex cup like that, or yeah. Pyrex, whatever it is, Pyrex actually, and then it'll, uh, it means you can see what you're doing. Yeah, which you can is see what you're doing, doing, and also the bigger this is, the better, because you can have more stick out, which yeah. is gonna be required. When right. You, I mean, so that's actually even... pretty simple, but it's still going to need, you're going to need to stick that tungsten sure. out a long way to get inside here and, yep. and do a better job. Yep. And so, and filler rods, we just got to go and up a grade, right? So if it's 304 stainless, we go up a grade. And you like these little thin ones as well? Easy to yeah, work with. Yeah, it's just, uh, with thin tube, it's better to have the thinner, the thinner rod. Thinner rod. All right, man. Well, I'm excited to see how this turns out. Go your hardest. All right. Verge away. intercooler and luckily because this is based on a VASTI, whoa, nearly, almost, because this is based on a VASTI, we can use a kit for the front part. Now it's going to be different up the back, we think, 
Luckily, the kit came with raw pipes, which is awesome, so we can cut and weld and do what we've got to do. So we're just now going to work out what to do. And what are we going to do, Woody? I reckon it will be pretty close. I know the turbo is going to be here, so it's going to be in our way. I do believe the piping goes, yeah, goes that way. That's going to be basically just the top there. Look, that, that looks like it's going to fit pretty well. That might even be usable. And even yeah. if it's a matter of shortening some stuff and just... Because we've got big holes to send it through, right? Having a kit is so handy because someone's done the hard work already. Yeah. All these have been mandrel bent in the position you need them, so yep. there's no spending hours actual... doing it. How big's the core? What's the size of the core? Um, I don't know. Big. I've got the instructions oh, here, so maybe I big, dude. should know. That's pretty big. And look, it goes in one side and it's got like offset thingos. That's pretty, that's, oh, it feels weighty. Dude, I'm so happy with that. That's excellent. That's big, man. Look how huge that is. It'll work for sure. So we are doing silicon joiners. Um, up to the power level that we're aiming for, if they're clamped properly and you do it right, uh, we shouldn't be seeing any of them blow off. You can weld on those Wiggins style things. Clam but this is, just, this is just going up towards where you might start thinking about it, right? Uh, look, even high horsepower application silicon still works fine. Yeah. But the, the clamshells, they're easy for I suppose, serviceability, getting them on and off for, yeah. for race car kind of things. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got a drag car, you've got to pull a pop off to change plugs every pass. Yeah, sweet. But for what you're doing, silicon's fine. Great. All right, let's bash this on, dude. Let's go. Sweet. So, what's awesome is this just bolts up, even though the metal here is all the Borg, it's the same. <laughs> it literally went in the cooler. That would have been awesome. Um, it's literally the same as uh, STI, as we discovered with so much other stuff. So, it fits, and that's amazing. That starting point, that's all done. We don't have to custom. I think that's that one now, isn't it? We don't have to custom this stuff, and now probably change a few bits of pipe up the front, and then, when the turbo's in place, we weld it all together, and we've got a mad intercooler. While we're busy messing with intercoolers, Benny is in charge of plumbing. A stack of Raceworks fittings have arrived so we can complete the fuel system. We're using GFB's FXD fuel pressure regulator and I scored a set of aftermarket fuel rails second hand for cheap. This is the carbon fibre intake we installed when we did a bunch of mods on the STI converted Lavorg. It is designed for the EJ25 but luckily for us it still fits with the H6 in place but because our turbo setup is completely different, the original filter, this is the one it comes with, isn't going to work. That's I think a 5 inch filter. We want to use a 4 inch because it also matches the size of our turbo, just makes everything easier. Luckily for us, also the aftermarket filter Zonk fits perfectly, but this that goes over the top to hold it in doesn't fit So Benny is going to machine this out and then that will actually just sit perfectly over the top and secure the filter in there And then we've just got one run of 100 mil pipe to get from here to the turbo and we can recycle this excellent intake A lathe is one of those tools that opens up a world of possibilities when you're customizing stuff It's a bit of a learning curve at first But being able to accurately trim this metal plate and a bunch of other fittings we need for this build is just excellent our turbo manifold is also coming along nicely. Al is adding a 2.5 inch V-band at the base of the manifold so the up-pipe can be easily taken on and off. Making some excellent progress. It is awesome to have some mates here helping as well with all their uh, excellent skills that they have. We are um, up to the stage where some things can't happen until other things happen. So until we've got the up pipe done, we can't place the turbo. Until we place the turbo, we can't work out the intake, which means we also can't work out where the cold side of piping is for the intercooler. Intercooler kit that Woody put on, uh, we can use basically the, the core itself, which fits beautifully. I'm really happy with that. And two of the pipes, but then once they get into the bay, everything's different because the six has a different size timing case here. So we're going to have to work something else out with that. Luckily, they're raw aluminium pipes, which means we just cut them, weld them, do what we have to do, try and have as, as few silicon joints as we can. We are going to use silicon, but you don't want to have too many points of failure. You also need to be able to pull it apart if you need to service things and get to stuff. The fuel rail setup, I actually got a second hand uh, set of these fuel rails, which is great, aftermarket ones, which means we can make our own that Benny has put on here. It came with some, we've made the others. Uh, we're waiting on one or two bits and pieces so he can finish the return on that and then also the feed. Then that's the fuel system completely done. Then it's just place turbo, plumbing the oil and coolant to the turbo, put the intercooler pipes on, and then 
the only thing left to do with some water and oil and fluids is wiring. So we're actually making some good progress. It's been about a day and a half, and we've got about that amount of time left before this needs to be as done as it can possibly be, and then it will just be about wiring it up and getting it to run. I've chosen a turbo that has V-band in and outs to make it easier to install onto the custom-made piping. The next challenge is to work out exactly where it's going to be placed on the up pipe. This is by far the slowest part of the process as a few millimetres movement at the bottom end can have the turbo knocking into stuff at the top. It would have gone in and out of the car at least 20 times before we were happy with it. Alan, this up pipe looks spectacular, especially considering it didn't exist a few hours ago and you made it from nothing. Well, some bends and some V-bands, but can you explain the function of why we need one of those? All right, so this is, does the same job as all Subaru, or you know, all the older Subaru turbo engines. The the engine's flat, it's a boxer, so the exhaust is at the bottom, the intake's at the top. You have some manifolding down the bottom and then the turbo is normally placed here. So this pipe goes from the manifolding down the bottom up to the turbo. That's why it's called an up pipe. Uh, in this case, we've kind of copied the four cylinder design, but much better because more cylinders. <laughs> uh, and uh, the manifolding then connects via a V-band. This comes up and the turbo sits on top around about in the same position. Nice. And that locks our turbo in place, which means we can do everything else. Now, there are other positions we could have put turbos. We could have put them over there. Some people put them at the front. Some people put them in all sorts of spectacular places. But there's, there's a few reasons why this ends up being a sensible spot. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I have put turbos in many different places on Subarus. It's, you know, th this is just the, the spot where they go from factory. There's space in the firewall. Yeah. There's there's space for it there, and if you want to retain all your uh, functions, like air conditioning, yeah. power steering, alternator, that's kind of the spot that it's got to be. Yeah. Otherwise, you're doing funky stuff and placing them here, but there's just too many compromises. Yeah. You can put it here and it'll look cool, but then you've got a big pipe coming over the top here, melting everything. Yes. So, yeah, it's, it's just a sensible spot to put yep. it. And for maybe for race car, because you're just going to dump an exhaust straight out the guard. Yep. Sure, okay, you, you, yep. you're saving some time. But actually, yeah, you're right. That's where it all needs to go. So from here, we know where the turbo is going to be. So yep. what are the next steps to get it all plumbed in and connected? Right, so we, we'll clamp it down, position the turbo. Because it's on V-bands, it actually rotates around a little bit. You know, you can tip it back and forth. So you've got to yep. get the right position. Then we'll clamp it down properly, take the turbo back off. And of course, it's a, a long tube hanging off some other tubes, so it's going to bend around like this, yeah. we have to brace it to the back of the engine or the, the bell housing in yeah. this case yeah. to sort of strengthen it up because it's going to have the weight of a turbo, so 10 kilograms sitting on it. Yes. It would soon bend, fail, do whatever yeah. if you didn't do that. Yeah. So that's the next step. Following that, we'll then find a place for the wastegate. Um, you want the wastegate not plumbed to atmosphere, so we'll put it to up. atmosphere via the exhaust? Yeah, yeah. So We'll talk about it later. That's Don't like that. the... You know, <laughs> it's not really the way to do it, but we'll, we'll um, you know, <laughs> make an exception. Do it just for your neighbours. Benny's phone was already running hot, and now the manifolds are nearly done. We can move on to some more fuel system things. These are our injectors. These are our fuel rails that I got secondhand. These are pretty cool. These are from Fuel Injector Clinic. They're sixteen fifties, and they've been engraved with MCM, which is so cool. So custom made for this build. Thank you, Fuel Injector Clinic. That is excellent. So I'm going to install these into the rails like that, bloop, with some adapters, because they don't fit like that. And then, um, yeah, throw them in the car. This combination of big injectors, free-flowing fuel rails and AN lines should add plenty of headroom for when the boost gets turned up. Being that we've added a new large feed line, we can use the original lines as returns back to the tank. The injectors go in with the help of some rubber grease, then we can start to work out where everything else is going to fit in the engine bay. This is a GFB EX44 external wastegate. So our turbo doesn't have a wastegate built into it like most of the factory ones do and like the one that came off the car does. So we need to plumb in an external one. These are pretty cool. So that bypasses exhaust gas around the turbo once the turbo gets to the speed you need to be to make the boost you want. Uh, and that's a 44 millimeter one, which should be just about right for what we're doing. You can get 38s, you can get 50s. This is right in between. Uh, it's a little bit of, tricky to plumb it in and you've got to weld on the V-bands and do some other tricky stuff. But this is, uh, this is very exciting. Boost control on this thing is gonna be awesome. Have you noticed also that doing this kind of custom stuff takes ages? And so when people go, oh, bolting on an exhaust that fits is really easy. It's too easy. It's actually really fun. This stuff is really fun, but the time is huge in comparison. So making this first bolt and something in, very, very different. 
It's starting to get a little crowded near our turbo, and this isn't even a big one. The wastegate will go on the up-pipe and it will open to bypass exhaust gas directly into the dump, which will be right next to it. You also need to add flex joints to some of this as the constant heating and cooling can crack it. This side of the turbo system is high pressure, so we're going to continue to purge weld. It uses heaps of gas, but the results are worth it. Okay, so up-pipe is reattached after Alan has made his mad mounting system and attached the wastegate. So that's in there now, turbo's going to go on. Oh, Let's do it together, here we go. The turbo's gonna go on and then we can put the wastegate on and the up pipe is more or less done, except for bracing it back to the gearbox so that it doesn't fall off, which we definitely don't want. Pipe is about to be secured properly for now using this cool technique that Al invented from in his brain somewhere, which I'm always amazed by. I just copied off someone else on the internet. Okay. <laughs> You're on the internet and I'm copying you. Um, so we are now just going to tack it in place. So you can probably see here that our pipe is sitting against this bracket that we've made. So now we're going to tack that so it sits in the right spot, take it all off again, which is why this takes so long because it's going on and off constantly, and then weld that up properly. And then we are mounted. a lot of progress. Turbo has a schnout on it and it's mounted which is awesome. The gate's in there, the bracket's in there. Uh, we now need to pull the rocker covers off to put breathers because it is going to breathe a bit heavy with all that boost in it and because the factory ones there's just not enough. We also need a turbo oil drain which you breathe, you drain back into the rocker cover as well. Bad news is these boys all have to get on planes uh, in like four hours. So we have maybe an hour, lucky if we're lucky, two to get this done and then we're just going to have to hit pause on it um, and then come back to it when everyone has some more time and just pick away at some other little jobs in the meantime. So see how we go. Engines, and particularly these flat ones, need to breathe. And by that, I mean the air in the crankcase and heads needs to get out so that it doesn't try and blast oil into the combustion chambers or out the seals. When you start adding boost and extracting more power, this only increases. We'll be adding a catch can setup to capture any of that oily air so the bay stays clean. To do this, we need to add some fittings to the rocker covers as the factory one just isn't going to cut it. We can also now lock our turbo in place and work out where the hot side intercooler pipe is going to fit in relation to all the other parts we still need to throw in there. All right, so we have only probably half an hour left with the boys. We're trying to just get some of the really tricky stuff that requires expertise and lots of us, like the oil drain and uh, yeah, bits that require machining and expert welding. I can, I can weld, but not like how. So um, I'm just gonna make this fitting work so that we have an oil drain. And then the turbo setups are more or less complete. And there's bits and pieces that I will do myself and then bits and pieces that hopefully I'll be able to come back and help us with at another point. And Benny as well for some of the exhaust work. That's what we're up to. Might be as far as we get with this part of the build. We might come back later in days, weeks time. I don't know exactly and uh, I finish it off, but I'm getting very excited about that car. I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait to drive it. I've never had a car with a proper mad built engine before. Very keen. So we can't get any weld-on fittings that are suitable for the oil drain today. 
today. Well, we ordered them over the last couple of days, but they just they just don't exist for whatever reason at the moment. They might be short on stock. So we're making our own out of some other old fittings. So Benny's machine on the lathe, an old fitting, and then we're just basically gonna drill a hole in the rocker cover, which is what we did with Supergrams as well, and drain the oil into that. It's been so awesome to spend some time with mates getting this engine swap and turbo install happening. Surrounding yourself with people with mad skills, you can't help but absorb knowledge which you can then put to use yourself. While we didn't quite get the whole thing finished in the short number of days we had together, we will be coming back to it in the not too distant future after we finish off a few other nugget cars that have been begging for some attention. It has been a massive couple of days working on Marty's Lavorg. It's been awesome to have Benny here from Benny's Custom Works and also the boys from the Skid Factory. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time basically just going and picking up lots of parts. Setching, getting stuff. Trying to find stuff that got lost in the mail. Exactly, and enabling things to happen because all these guys are obviously really good at what they do and it's, uh, it's been really enjoyable to be a part of it and get it done. And this is kind of how you often do build cars is with your mates helping you out, which has been great. Uh, so the car is, the, the framework really is there. It's got a big intercooler on it, it's got a big turbo on it, up pipe, dump pipe, manifolds, all being welded up, all custom made, which takes ages. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's just little bits that we don't have, so stuff that needs to be welded and ordered and added. So we're going to pick away it. Uh, we're not exactly sure when it's going to come back yet, because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not here. Going to keep picking away at it, and as we update, the car, we will update you. I think, as usual, when we get to kind of this point in the project, it's also a matter of you don't know exactly what you need nope. until you get here. It's not like kind of doing these projects where you go, there's your bolt-on exhaust, there's your intake. It's really simple. It's a tried and tested. Doing something like this, you've actually got to build half of it before you realise what is the other stuff that we need. And so we're just kind of waiting on that now. So, yeah, massive thank you, boys. Thank you Thanks, very much. Dude. You're the best. And uh, see you next time, of course, if you want to support the show. Check out Mighty Car Mods and, of course, check out the boys' channels as well. They'll we'll all be linked below. And uh, see you next time. Sounds good. Bye see bye. Everyone. bye. Kebabs for sure. Who wants kebabs? Oh, yeah. Yep, keen. Kebabs, let's go.